Um, and uh, I think if I just click next a few times, it'll get me to the problem set four, which is what I'm trying to get to, to demonstrate um, kind of uh, maybe modeling how you might use the generative AI in a way that helps your learning. It's not cutting corners. It's uh, so, so this is what I'm going to do. I'll, let me bring up a uh, chat GPT on one screen. And, um, you know, uh, the problem set four on the other side of the screen. And uh, so what I'm going to do is imagine that I'm a student working through this problem set and um, deep, uh, I can kind of uh, role play um, student at different levels of preparedness. Now, uh, one thing that you do have to be aware of is that um, you do have to be careful not um, to prompt prompt, uh, prompt to chat GPT properly so that uh, it doesn't give you too much uh, answer. Like, so, you know, uh, so this is a fairly easy question. So let me do this one uh, as an example of something that you shouldn't do. Um, so if you simply give chat GPT a question, even without any prompting, you know, like you saying, you know, I'm trying to check, give me all the answers. Like, even if you want to say that, uh, it'll probably give you all the answers. So, um, although it, it might retain in memory of me asking it in the past uh, to help me learn physics, um, but it, what it remembers, it yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, um, yeah, so it's doing this. Um, I wonder if I, let me try uh, starting a, can I do a new temporary chat? Uh, or cream. Yeah, so it won't use memories. Yeah, so let me demonstrate this in temperature where it doesn't have memory of me asking um, th those specific prompts before. So if you simply give a question to ChatGPT like this, what it'll usually do is just to answer it for you from beginning to the end. And I mean, <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah, I'll compute both the results for you. <laughs> so helpful. Um, and it might give you the right answer. Let me just put in the numbers it gives me without any thinking and let's see if that's right. Um, wait, oh, that's, wait. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. 2.1a e10, that's for part a, copying from there. 1.87 e12, copying the result from there. And they are probably right without double checking. Yeah. Now, if you were to do something like this after doing that for a few weeks, what they'll, what you'll find out is that you didn't learn anything. Even if you didn't what you didn't do what test student did, you even if you actually read it through it, the thing is um, the kind of the skill that's involved in problem solving. If you are simply reading the steps that someone else went through, I can guarantee you. Nine out of 10 people, maybe 99 out of 100 people, you won't remember a thing after having read it through, after having typed in the final answer into the homework system, you won't remember much of it a few weeks from now. Uh, really what you need to do is you need to go through the struggle yourself. You need to go through the steps of trying to solve it yourself. You need to make the mistakes yourself. And th those are the steps where ChatGPT can actually help you. So what I would uh, recommend is, uh, so I'm going to get out of this temporary chat. And as the first step, uh, I'm going to uh, give ChatGPT uh, instruction saying that I'm trying to learn physics. Help me learn physics. Don't give me the solutions. I'm going to tell you, uh, tell ChatGPT what I have done so far. Help me with just the next step. Help me get over this Pump where I'm stuck. So let me start with that. Hi, I'm working on my electrostatics uh, physics homework problems, and uh, I am really trying to learn physics. So please don't give me the answers right away, even with the detailed steps. Um, uh, I will first uh, tell you what I've done so far with the question. Um, um, 
uh, um, tell me semicolon tell me if uh, what I've done so far looks right and maybe help me with the next step so we do that preparation now let me find a question um, that Yeah, it will probably respond. Um, let me find uh, a question that's uh, maybe uh, fairly substantial and ask that. Uh, like, you know, this is easy, uh, but maybe um, not sure why to stop. Try again. Yeah, okay, memory updated. Second answer? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So let's uh, uh, see if, as a way of testing uh, if it's been properly prompted. Let's uh, try as, um, just pasting in this question and let's see what it does. Yeah, it still does that. Um, I think it's uh, overly being helpful. Um, but you know this is an easy question and, and I say easy because once you have the right formula then yeah you you um, the ans the answer is easy so have you already signed up <laughs> gave me um, yeah, it's fine and so you know with other so I will um, yeah so here you're just plugging the oh maybe um, so you know sometimes people make mistakes uh, so let me uh, Kind of have the kind of the really basic mistakes that people make um, that you know you really shouldn't be making if you are using Wolfram Alpha properly. But you know, let's say someone's just typing in the numbers one by one and forgetting all the powers of ten or metric prefixes. So you know, you say k eight point nine nine times the charges eight times five divided by the distance. Uh, oh wait. Oh, you can't do that. Um, but let's say, so you should first solve for R. But let's say I'm not really paying attention, so I try to divide by 9 squared. So I um, wonder what I'll say. Um, I plugged in all the numbers and got 4.44. 4, um, but the system says that answer is wrong. I, I don't, and you know, it all says that's wrong um, because it's like nowhere near where it should be. I wonder what ChatGPT will say. I wonder if it will guess correctly that I did something really off. Um, yeah, plug the numbers. Okay, yeah, yeah. Solving for R. Yeah, so I think it's someone who's doing what I just did might look at this and realize, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> you should, first the solve for R. Um, so, I mean, oh, oh, I forgot to solve for R. I, I thought uh, I was just uh, supposed to plug in 9 for R. Uh, uh, let me do the algebra for solving for R. Um, and it'll probably wait until I've done the algebra and gives it something. Make it uh, yeah. So so uh, ChatGPT will uh, wait for uh, me to actually do the algebra. So let me do the algebra. I'm gonna get some uh, space where it's uh, kind of clean. And um, so yeah. So I'll uh, so I my preference always is to. To the, with the numbers, but in this role playing, let me just, uh, my preference is to do the algebra with the symbols, but in this role playing, let me just uh, uh, use this as a starting place. Uh, so my recommendation is not to do this, where, you know, you are uh, plugging in numbers prematurely, but sometimes, you know, it um, that's sort of what you gotta do um, to get started somewhere. So let me just uh, imagine I'm doing that. So I have 9 is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times 8 times 10 to the minus 6, 5 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by r squared. So, um, 
uh, need to have left uh, enough space. Let me multiply both sides by r squared. Then I have left hand side, 9 times r squared is equal to, actually let me use a different color. Left hand side, I have 9 times r squared is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the and you know this is uh, this is pretty simple so let me not deliberately make mistakes and just uh, do the normal thing get a screenshot ask a chat bit hey does this look right and it'll say it, it, it'll say that it looks right uh, so I'm gonna divide both sides by 9 that will give me this result and to get rid of this uh, I take square root of both sides which you know get rid of square there so I, on the left hand side I have R on the right side hand side I have that let me get a screenshot of that and just to ask a chat GPT how does this look oops mm. I think it's gonna be fine uh, yeah all right uh, how does this look Yeah. And, you know, what I do recommend is working it in symbols like this. That's really what you should work on. So, um, uh, yes, uh, please. Um, uh, what number do you get? Uh, just being lazy, I don't want to type it into calculator myself. And if you ask something like this to ChatGPT, it'll probably plug in the numbers for you. Um, so it's a matter of, you know, what do you think uh, will help you learn? Um, I guess the calculator exercises, I don't know how much that helps you learn. So, <laughs> you know, if you're just avoiding that, all right, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> okay, we got 25 minutes. That's probably enough time for two fairly substantial questions. So let me find a couple of questions. Uh, uh, right, yes, thank you. And, and, you know, I'm obviously lying because I didn't <laughs> do the calculation myself. But ChatGPT is uh, far more patient than... I would be. <laughs> That's at least one way of putting it. Because it's not a human being. It doesn't have. It's just. Uh, it, it does. Uh, it, 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 um, it shows whatever behavior the human reinforce, re reinforcement learning um, trainers uh, rated higher. And I think, I'm pretty sure in a lot of those cases, people prefer longer responses and more compliant uh, in generative AI. So. So let's see. Um, this is, is more involved, but I think I can find the better two questions. Oh, this is probably a, can be a good one. Uh, let me see if there's a, a, other questions. You know, this is a question that, that I think I took super long to do on video. So maybe I should do it here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me do it here. So. Uh, I think that's all the questions, yeah. So let me grab a screenshot of this. Um, let's see, so lower left hand corner of the square shown here, yeah. Uh, so I'll say uh, I have this question and I'm having trouble getting started. Can you help me? sort of, you know, someone who might be lost. And yeah, you have to calculate net electrostatic force. So you should uh, identify the three forces. Let me read. Uh, yeah, three other charges, locate the other corners. They'll repel each other, yeah. Uh, to get started, identify the forces. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to ask ChatGPT for a drawing because I know it doesn't do technical drawings well. But it is um, describing this, you know, there are three charges affecting the lower left charge. It's uh, describing these um, these charges. It's describing the charge directly to right, this one, charge directly above, this one, and the charge diagonally across the square. So um, I, I will be the you know human being that uh, processes what it's describing in words. 
So use columns, Coulomb's law to calculate the magnitude of the force between each pair of charges. Yeah, Coulomb's law is that. Um, yeah, distance. Yeah, it, it's telling me this information. Um, diagonal charge. Ah, so it's uh, giving me some help. Um, I, I guess at this point I'll accept that help because uh, it does uh, eliminate one possible place where uh, I could have made a mistake. And uh, it does explain since it forms the diagonal of the square. Or I guess it's not explaining. You know, this comes from the Pythagorean theorem. I think most people in the class know. Um, so resolve the forces into components. Um, okay. <laughs> so let's see. Um, well, is it trying to? Yeah. Okay. So uh, identify the forces on the on the charge. Okay. Um, so. So I'll be referring back to this overall thing over and over because it looks like it's giving me the um, overall uh, outline of everything that I'll be doing. Now, for someone who's uh, stopped at the beginning, um, doing this all in one shot is probably challenging. So I'm going to say, okay, so I need to, so, okay. So let me start with uh, step one. Uh, so there are um, three forces on the um, three forces on the bottom left charge. Um, if uh, I draw, and if you remember the phrase "free body diagram," free body diagram. Uh, can you check if that looks right? All right, so let me draw a free body diagram. And I guess there, uh, maybe there is no reason to draw it wrong. Um, well, let me give it this a try. So let's say I just drew just only two forces, you know, force one and force two. Let me see if uh, ChatGPT can tell me corrections to that. Uh, uh, or I guess uh, since I know that there should be three forces, uh, I'll say uh, I have this. I'm not sure how to draw the third force. Due to the charges yeah, directly above, pushing it down. To the right, pushing it to the left. Third force acts along the diagonal of the square. Point away from the lower left charge, um, angled. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's wrong. Um, uh, into the, yeah, point, I mean, you, you know, it's the lower. So, uh, so, so I think this description should be confusing. So I'll say, uh, we are talking about the force uh, on the lower left charge, right? Or diagonal repulsive, yeah. Push the lower diagonal, yeah, down into the left, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so sometimes a ChatGPT makes mistakes, but you know, when you make mistakes, usually something should be, you know, self-contradictory or um, it should give you a little bit of pause. And if it does, you know, interact. That's really the one advantage that generative AI has that, you know, my um, videos are solving these doesn't because, um, you know, you can't interact with a video. Uh, so, okay. Uh, how does this look? Um, oh, yeah, breakdown. Yeah, so I, I think this is simple enough. You know, this has components that are X and Y. I think I'm good. Uh, I think uh, I'm okay with the breaking F3 down into components. Uh, 
let me try writing out the uh, magnitude of the forces. So this is the step two that I gave above. So in this outline, you know, use Coulomb's law to calculate the magnitude. So we'll do that. Um, so let me um, find some space here. So, um, so referring to Coulomb's law, and um, oh, there are no numbers. So okay, I'll, I'll just to use um, you know symbols as we are as should be uh, <laughs> what you are training yourself to do. So F one, um, since the distances are the same, F one and F three, or sorry, F two should have the same magnitude. And that should be Coulomb constant, uh, yeah, times um, the charges are the same. They are both all Qs, so Q squared divided by the distance A squared. So those are both F1 and F2. And magnitude of F3 should be Coulomb constant times same charges, Q squared. And this time it's, uh, oh, I copied it wrong when... ChatGPT was giving me 2 square root of A. So it'll be that squared, meaning 4 times, um, wait, 4 times? Wait, that's wrong. Um, sorry. I, so I wrote it down wrong. Uh, ChatGPT gave me correct expression before. Uh, yeah, square root of 2 and then times A. I uh, can't copy. Um, so square root of 2 times A. So when you square that, then you should get 2 uh, times a squared. So let me do that. Divided by 2 times a squared. Um, and so with the components, so I would say, um, so it was giving me those expressions before for F3. Um, these. Um, so, you know, actually, yeah, yeah. So let me just write it down that way without simplifying it. So F3, X would be um, cosine of 45 degrees times Ke Q squared over 2A squared. F3, Y is equal to sine of 45 degrees times Ke Q squared over 2A squared. Let me paste it in, um, see what it says. It, you know, it, it should be correct. Uh, uh, yeah. I have uh, this. And then, yeah, move on to summing up the forces, yeah. Yeah, good, good. Components, yeah. And then will it just prompt me for the next step? Or, uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, this should be unnecessary. I, I mean, you can, but unnecessary. Also with the magnitudes, some the force. Oh, yeah, it's telling me. Yeah, so that's helpful, you know. Horizontally combine these, they are in the same direction, yeah. Both acting to left. Vertical forces, yeah, combine these, both downward. So, yeah, um, so it's to ask you, would you like, so if I simply said yes, please, I think it's going to just tell me what to do. So, yeah, let's do that. Um, but hopefully as you are, you know, working through this, you are reading this, uh, making sure that you are understanding, and then... Uh, <laughs> um, now, if you keep just doing this, it'll just work the whole thing out for you. That's the one thing that ChatGPT just isn't programmed to do. Like a good tutor uh, should kind of push you, you know, get you to work out some of this stuff yourself. Um, wait, did it this just to do the whole thing for me? Um, now, if I were to simply type this in, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be graded as correct. Because it's not programmed to accept, um, like, you know, Newton as one of the variables. So, I mean, I can type this in. 
um, and it'll say it's incorrect. Uh, Uh, so let's do it this way. So I'm gonna erase the screen uh, of the drawings. Um, so let's see what it says. Um, I wonder if it'll recognize that it should have kept things in terms of variables uh, or symbols. Uh, I entered the, the and serve for magnitude and I got this. Yeah, in terms of constants. Yeah. Uh, a, a perfect fact. So yeah, so you wouldn't actually uh, write this at all. Uh, is it really? Does it? I wonder if it simplifies really that um, simply where I don't think it simplifies this way. So I'm pretty sure it did the stuff wrong uh let's give this a try um yeah so i did that uh, so so sometimes um so i'll say nope and i'm just gonna give it one more chance to correct itself fully it's possible that we have to go back up and just go through it step by step Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't change anything. So okay, we'll go back, step up. So you know where I say yes, please. Yeah, didn't give me anything useful anyway. So let's actually um, write go through these steps. So um, yeah, for the horizontal forces, these yeah. So I'm gonna write this up here and then um, go from there. So net force. In the x direction would be f2 plus f3x. I'll say left is positive. So um, f2 plus f3x is equal to, um, I gotta scroll up a little bit for f2. Ke q squared over a squared plus, and then for F3x, um, let me keep with the exact expression because uh, I'm not quite sure if I do the decimal approximation if uh, the system will say it's wrong. So uh, I have KEQ squared over 2A squared times square root of 2 divided by 2. That's fx. And fy is actually the same. Um, so I'll just say f sum of fy appears to be the same. Um, so here I'll say, uh, let's uh, go back up to when we were adding forces by components. Thus, I, I, I did it by, by hand. Does this uh, look right? Good. Um, yeah, so here, um, uh, yeah, let me just do it this way. So when you do this, uh, you're going to get um, kind of the common factor of kq squared over a squared. So let me just separate it out, q squared over a squared. And then let me make a slight mistake mistake in uh, working out the rest of the factors. So it's, you know, one half, so the, the correct one <laughs> should be, um, uh, so one half plus square root of two over four. Uh, so it should be this thing squared plus the same thing, so times two, and then you are 
square rooting it, so it should be um, square root of 2 times 1 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 4. It should be that, but let's imagine that we made some mistake and I don't know, just to, took this uh, common factor and doubled it and did something like uh, this. Um, 1 plus square root of 2 over 2. It will say it's wrong. Um, let's see if uh, ChatGPT can uh, give a correction for what it should have been. Okay, I tried to calculate the net force magnitude, but it, it says it's uh, wrong. the first oh uh, yeah yeah so it gets to correctly that they were simply magnitudes were added directly great yeah square both sides first and then yeah do that and double check then you should realize oh it's uh, so let me just keep this one half the whole division by four and you know the system doesn't really at least the way it's coded it doesn't require you to simplify expressions we enter it this way. Hey, wait, why is it not saying it's correct? Um, did I miss it? Um, hmm, that should have been right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, Mm. It says it's wrong. I mean, another option is to just uh, uh, I think that is right. It's like could have just uh, typed that whole thing in. Or did I miss something up there? Um, oh, there's no one half there. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think. Uh, um, but there is the four there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh uh, I spotted the typo. And I think the expression that this has is also overall wrong. So I don't think a chat chip, if you got in this far, I don't think it would have really helped. Um, but it, this is the expression that it should have been. So uh, let me correct that, and now it should say it's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'll just say I found my typo. Um, yeah, I spotted a typo. Oh. Oops. Uh, it, it'll say, and 45 degree angle, it already gave that. So this took long. Um, I, I, yeah. But. I, I guess uh, um, still, I think one of the advantages of um, generative AI is, you know, where we get stuck, we have someone to chat with that will give you immediate response. And it, it might not always be correct, like where it was trying to correct me, the thing that it missed was, um, it missed that this is still square root of 2 over 4. Like I realized that looking at this, that I missed the factor of 1 there. Um, so. And I don't think it's the chat GPT who made a mistake, yeah, because it has, yeah, so. Oh, wait, it actually missed this. It misunderstood uh, um, this part, so. Anyways, um, <laughs> water under the bridge. So we got maybe four minutes. Um, I, I think that might be good amount of time to maybe look at... Um, one question that we skipped earlier, let me just uh, make sure there isn't something more substantive uh, later. Yeah, I think it's fine. Oh, you know, I could do this. Um, so let, let's give this a try. So um, this is the kind of question that requires you to kind of remember kinematics stuff. 
Um, so um, here's one possible use of generative AI. Something like a just-in-time review. So I can give it a question. So uh, let me just wrap up the previous conversation. All right. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, looks, uh, uh, thank you. And then for this question, I will say, um, here's a new question. Um, yeah. Uh, here's a new question. And I can figure out the... Um, electric field in the textbook did they already give you the formula for the I guess we gave you the formula for the um, um, I, I do think we gave you the formula for the uh, infinite plane charges. So, um, charge squares, carry the magnitude, infinite planes. Um, yeah, and you know, it's a square plane, you know, the length of a side, so you know the area. Okay, yeah, it's, I think, and I can figure out the electric field. Uh, between the plates, and there's a formula for it in the textbook, uh, but I'm not sure how to calculate for part B. Uh, and you should uh, tell me some stuff about kinematics. That's really the physics of 4A material that someone like this would uh, need a review of. And yeah, 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 there's formula, use it, get electric field. And yeah, for part to be now, it's giving me some detailed set of steps. So force through this, acceleration through this, Newton's second law. And as you are reading it, if you realize, um, yeah, so yeah, so time spent between plates. And um, like as you are reading these formulas, if it, you know, rings a bell, it reminds you of the kinematics and stuff you learned in Physics 4A, then great, um, then, you know, then, you know, follow these steps, get some help, get the right answer, and you're good. And where it says, um, you know, using the kinematics equation, then maybe if you realize, oh, I need a review. Uh, uh, I think uh, I need a kinematics review. Uh, I do recognize d is equal to one half a d squared, but it's been a really long time since my mechanics class. Um, I wonder if I just said that what it'll do. I'm not really making a specific request. Um, uh, oh, I wish it didn't. Nah, I'll delete the memory later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so, yeah so there's the oh so it just uh, gives me the whole thing yeah that's fine um so this is the more general expression that would be true more often than this simplified one to explaining yeah no vertical velocity so it can simplify it this way final velocity that way yeah it's giving you those details so uh, we're over time so we'll say all right uh, I think uh, I can from here Thank you. And I think a generative AI can be good, like a Twitter, you know, in reviewing some of the stuff that you realize that um, that you don't quite remember from a longer time ago. And, uh, you know, looking for the stuff in the textbook, in the reference materials can take time. And if a quick review like this gives you enough to kind of continue on with the material in this class, then great. That, um, that kind of does what's necessary. At, at, at this moment in time. So I think that's everything. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I lost my, or I kicked out of my one real-time person. Um, I'll uh, see you in lab um, um, and uh, see you next week.